So turning to topic number four, diagnosis has been made of DVT or PE. What treatment options do we have? And I think it's easy to see on the right with a more extensive proximal or thigh clot that it seems nice to dissolve this blood clot. And that's called uh, giving clot busters or thrombolytic therapy. The drug is called TPA. And when a clot is relatively fresh, i.e. 14 days old, it's not firm and old and scarred, uh, clot busters can dissolve some of these clots uh, and can do that quite successfully. They are associated with some increased risk for major bleeding, so we don't rush into giving them. Um, but the plumbers in the medical profession, uh, such as the vascular surgeons and vascular radiologists, um, have a tendency uh, to give these drugs um, because they do open the veins more rapidly. However, it's not clear whether this is really beneficial long-term, whether it changes the long-term outcome, i.e. the post-thrombotic syndrome, which we'll talk about a little later on. And therefore, presently there's a big uh, NIH-sponsored trial ongoing, the ATTRACT trial, that looks at the benefit from uh, this kind of treatment with clot removal through catheters and TPA versus uh, patients not getting this treatment. So it's unclear at this point whether TPA and clot busters are beneficial or not. But the mainstay in the acute setting, i.e. in the first few days after diagnosis, um, are one of these three choices, either IV heparin, which has to be given in the hospital, and if the DVT is extensive, patient has a lot of pain, immobility, we typically admit the patient to the hospital. Um, we can also give low molecular weight heparins, and these are the drugs I mentioned earlier, the Lovenox or Enoxaparin, uh, the Fragment or Inohep kind of drugs that need to be injected once or twice daily, um, and uh, can be given as an outpatient. So if the symptoms are only moderate or only mild, and this is true for DVT as well as PE, and the patient can manage at home, has support structure at home, hospital admission is not needed. And then the third choice, and equally good to the low micro heparins, would be Erixtra, which is available as a generic as well, Funda Paranox, which is a once-daily uh, injection of a blood thinner. Now, these, one of these three therapies clearly needs to be given in the first at least five days, uh, while at the same time one starts Warfarin, which is Coumadin or uh, Jantovin, as brand names. And Coumadin takes uh, several days to kick in, uh, to thin the blood at least five days, sometimes eight, ten days. Uh, and everybody needs a different dose, so it needs to be monitored. And many of you who are on warfarin go in to get your INR tested. The target INR is typically two to three. That's where patients with DVT-PE should be. Um, if you're not on warfarin, your value is 1.0. Um, the thinner the blood, the higher the number, and the higher the risk for bleeding. And since warfarin takes at least five or eight or ten days, one needs to initially treat with heparin or low micro heparin or Rixtra so that the patient has blood thinning on board. But once the INS above two, we stop the injections. Now, the big question is always how long does somebody need to be treated with warfarin if he or she has had a DVT or PE? And that's one of the major referral reasons to a hematology clinic. And it really depends on a number of individual factors that determine should it be three months, six months, or should it be long term, which means for several years. And I will get to the thought process in just a second. Now, the other option beyond warfarin that one could certainly consider, even at this time I would not use in the acute setting, would be one of the two new oral anticoagulants, the very promising drugs called Prodaxa, or the bigger trend, or Xarelto, called Rivaroxaban. These are the new drugs that are now FDA approved for certain indications, not for DVT and PE treatment. And the nice thing is that they do not need to be monitored. One dose fits all. Um, so there's no need for INR monitoring. The Prodax is dosed twice a day, Zarelta once a day. The second advantage is that these drugs do not interfere with vitamin K in the diet, so patients can eat what they want. And the ones of uh, you on the phone who on warfarin know how uh, impaired the vitamin K uh, interaction 
or how much the vitamin K can interact with the INR. Um, now, the production of Zerotoy has been tested in the VTNPE and data have been published in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, two large publications, but at this point FDA has not approved the drugs, but hopefully there will be a decision within the next six months, I would think, or maybe 12 months. Um, but I would not use them at this point in the acute setting of a clot, i.e. in the first uh, 10 or 14 days. Now, what should a patient with an acute DVT, with a newly diagnosed DVT or PE, expect? And I have to say this really depends on the patient, on the extent of the clot. So the improvement once blood thinners have been started, uh, improvement can be quick or it can be slow. Some people report that they're better within two, three days in the hospital. Others take weeks or months to improve. Um, and it's impossible to predict how patients will really fare. Um, probably the best parameter of how things are going is that the patient looks at the last few days or the last two, three weeks and sees does he or she continue to improve and then you would expect more improvement. But if after two or three months there's no further improvement and symptoms have plateaued, then there may well not be any further improvement. And there may be leftover symptoms. Patients ask often, well, now that I have an acute DVT or PE, how active can I be? And patients can walk around. Um, that's why we treat as outpatients often. They can be active. They can walk. They can. Um, there are no real physical limitations except patients shouldn't really push it. The clot in the leg typically takes about four weeks to become firm and attach the blood vessel wall. And after four weeks, the risk of this clot breaking off and traveling to the lung is quite low. Um, so the first four weeks is where I typically say, take it somewhat easy, don't push it, but by four weeks you can be back to your normal full ac activity level, which includes running, bicycling, and whatever you do. Similarly, I recommend uh, that flying in the first four weeks may not be the best idea because clots may break off. There's some issue with hypobaric pressure in the plane that may play a role. Little data on this, and I'm not sure whether this four-week limitation, not flying is really, will hold up, but at this point I get the impression that's the safest thing to do. And I warn patients with an acute DVT-PE that they may have some depressive symptoms. Uh, sometimes patients have been completely healthy, a young woman who develops a DVT on the birth control pill, an athlete, and patients may be bedridden um, and may react with a depression due to that, so sometimes antidepressive therapy may well be appropriate. Uh, warfarin management in the first, particularly the first four weeks or so is very important because we don't know how much warfarin a patient needs. There's need for INR monitoring. The patient needs to learn about diet, the constant diet, not avoiding all vitamin K, just eating similar amounts of vitamin K containing foods throughout the week. Um, back and forth visits to the clinic to get INR monitors monitored that can be cumbersome, but is highly important. And then the patient may stay on warfarin for three, six months, and we'll get to the long-term treatment in just a second. But patients often ask, do I need a regular follow-up Doppler ultrasound? Should I get one at four weeks, at three months, at six months? And it's typically not needed. It's only needed if new symptoms come up, if things worsen. Then we wonder, is there a recurrent clot? And we do a follow-up Doppler ultrasound. Or if there are new chest symptoms, we may do a follow-up CT scan. But otherwise, there's no benefit from monitoring how the clot over time shrinks or disappears. Uh, I can uh, say that at about three or six months after an acute clot, about 50%, half of the people, don't have any leftover clot on Doppler ultrasound. But half of the people have scar tissue left that is chronic. And it doesn't matter. It, it, as long as the patient doesn't have any symptoms, that's what counts. We cannot do anything about the scar tissue. It cannot be surgically removed. It does not predict recurrent clots. It does not break off. So there's no role for routine follow-up Doppler ultrasounds or CT. The only time I do a Doppler ultrasound follow-up is at three or six months, and the patient and I discuss should we discontinue warfarin or not, and we decide to stop warfarin. At that point, I want a new baseline just in case trouble comes up in the future, new leg symptoms, 